I'm super duper competitive and I don't always know the best way of dealing with that because I get very frustrated with myself when I can't perform the way that I think I should. And I don't always have a good barometer for what should should look like. So the standard I hold myself to is not necessarily realistic. And so it was really helpful for me to be able to work up to what I thought that standard should be and where I thought I should be. And, you know, given that I'd been playing for theoretically three years, I didn't feel like I was in the place that I should be. So it helped me also set more realistic goals on what should looked like, which was helpful. And having come from like a super duper high level athletic childhood, mm -hmm. now as an adult with two kids and figuring out how to balance like actual life as opposed to just spending able, being able to spend six hours a day training, you know, what that looked like also in a healthy way. But yeah, the burnout cycle was, it was real. I mean, yeah. that took me a while. One of my big goals was again, just to increase my endurance, to not have to worry about being gassed. And track awareness was challenging because yeah. that's one of those things that's really hard to practice unless you're in it. And so I was finding that because I was thinking so much about, oh my God, am I going to be able to breathe at the end of a minute and a half or two minutes, depending on my rule set? You know, what if I can't breathe? If I can't do it, I couldn't think about what was happening on the track. But now yeah. that I don't have to think about whether or not my physical endurance is there, you know, I know that I'm strong enough to get through those minute and a half or two minutes that I'm able to really be much more aware of what's happening. I'm a better team player mm -hmm. because I can communicate differently and I can hear differently. You know, I'm not so focused on, oh my God, <laughs> like, oh my God, let them call off the jam, please. But I can, you know, I can hear what, what my teammates are saying in a very different way. And I can hear what the other team is saying in a really different way. Mm -hmm. And that was not a benefit that I actually expected to have. You know, that was a very, that was a big surprise to me that that was mm -hmm. one of the things that really, really shifted. It was a great, I mean, an amazing unintended sort of consequence of everything. The biggest life shift for me has been routines. Mm -hmm. And then I can't even, as someone with a terrible ADHD, I can't begin to explain how having routines has changed everything from parenting to the meal planning part of it was part of the programming, but just like being a better parent, being a better spouse, having a cleaner house, having my, my business run more smoothly. And it, yeah, I mean, for me, I, that piece of it was like, the derby piece is great, but that part was like life changing, <laughs> having somebody on the outside who could see my progress in a different way than I could was mm -hmm. fantastic. It was really, really helpful. And the group was really helpful. And I think the group calls are fantastic. It makes a big yeah. difference to have that community around you. Going into this, one of my goals was not to come out of practice feeling like I could have done better, yeah. whatever that meant. And again, a lot of that had to do with my mindset and understanding what was realistic and what wasn't, which is still something I work on. So not all of it was the physical side of it. I have learned that I am that, that, I, that I was not as weak a skater as I went into this thinking that I was. So that mind shift was important, but also the way that I just view what I accomplish. And one of the lessons that I worked on so hard through Crash Course was understanding that how to be an athlete on, in the long term versus that short term. And for me, that was like a really hugely pivotal moment of the way that I was looking at my own practices and the way that I was looking at my own involvement was so skewed and was such a short-term view of what things really needed to look like, yeah. that that was and tremendous. So when I say that this, like, the biggest change was mindset stuff, that's really what I'm talking about, is that huge shift just in my thinking. I want to say everybody should do it, and it will be amazing. But the truth of the matter is, if you do it and it's amazing, like you have to put in the work. None of this is going to get done for you. And mm -hmm. if you don't put the work in and you don't put the time in and you don't make the commitment, you're not going to get, get out of it what you could. As I said, some of this stuff is literally life-changing, but you're not going to get to that point if you aren't really motivated and committed to doing it. And one of my favorite quotes is, you're not always going to be motivated, so you must learn to be disciplined. And that really held so true for me during all of this. You have to show up and do it, whether you want yeah. to or not, and whether there's an excuse or not. Not to override your body signals, which is also something I have to always learn a little bit about. But it's, you, you, it's, it, you got to put in the work and if you do, it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. I'm super duper excited. It's been, as I said, amazing, amazing opportunity. I'm so glad that I found it when I did. I'm glad I was able to jump into it with both feet the way that I was. So, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to yeah. see, you know, new people doing it too. It's always fun now to have people sign. I'll be like, oh, you have no idea. It's going to be so good.